indeed. Hello and welcome to Good News. So, what have we learned this week? Well, Rob Smith can't work out if he's still a virgin. Does a horse count? I'm not sure. <laughs> Over at BBC Breakfast, Helen Mirren revealed what she said when she met Justin Bieber. What's you little comedy? shit. <laughs> God knows what Carol Kirkwood did to Brian Adams. Have you ever waved at Phil Collins in traffic? <laughs> No, but I've done a lot more than that to Brian Adams. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Sean Williams doesn't know what teabagging is. Why would you want to smell it's... like a teabag? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I think this guy's in love with David Cameron. It's a system so unfair that the candidates should come second or third to win that win. <laughs> 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 The royal wedding is in two weeks. The media coverage has been relentless. The most anticipated wedding is only about three weeks away. Two weeks away. Twelve days to go. 7,000 journalists. Two billion people watching. On April the 29th. Even schools are obsessed. They've been having pretend weddings. A mock wedding uh, was held in the village of Orton, but it didn't exactly stick to royal protocol. Instead, the bride was five years old, the groom was nine, and the ring bearer was an owl. <laughs> I think they confused Buckingham Palace with Hogwarts. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. Wouldn't it be great if Wills and Kate went for these vows? I will always care for you. I will love you forever. I promise not to boss you around. <laughs> I promise not to steal your play doh <laughs> Some of the kids really got into their roles. Here's Prince Charles. Camilla slams him. I always dream it every night that I'm, that I'm going to be king the next day. It'll be a while till that happens. <laughs> How harsh is that? I'm going to be king. Never going to happen. <laughs> The media's gone Kate Middleton crazy. She's beautiful. She's an angel. The kids, not so sure. I think Kate is a beautiful girl, but I don't think she's really my type. Wouldn't it be great if they interviewed another kid and he went, Kate Middleton? God, no. I like girls with a bit more junk in their trunk. <laughs> they got to have that badonka donk going on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> in fact, if Beyonce's watching, tell her I'm ready for that jelly. <laughs> Back to the proper wedding. That was a bit sinister, wasn't it? <laughs> Back to the proper wedding. Have you seen who's going? The invitations have begun arriving on doormats, people in Britain and abroad, including David and Victoria Beckham. Oh, I'd love to see Beckham around the royals. They'd have nothing in common. Him just stood next to the Queen. Um... Uh... <laughs> um... <laughs> um... <laughs> When you sing the national anthem, do you sing, God save me? <laughs> Imagine Victoria meeting Prince Philip. Hello, I'm posh. Not here, you're not. <laughs> I'm going to give you a new nickname. From now on, you're Princess Poundland. <laughs> Mind you, posh and Bex are going to have fun. The reception sounds amazing. William and Kate are said to be planning to erect a nightclub inside Buckingham Palace for a royal knees up following the ceremony. Please, please let the Queen DJ. Wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? E to the L to the I to the Z. Wins a massive shaky booty! <laughs> it doesn't matter what music they play, we all know this guy will get his grind on. And it goes a little something like this. <laughs> The big sporting news of the week was, of course, the London Marathon. Around 35,000 people took part in the London Marathon today. Did you watch the coverage? Some of the reporters were so annoying, the runners simply ignored them. Let's see if we can get one. This is what you do, and believe me, even things like this. High five for the camera. High five for the camera. No. <laughs> I think I speak for the entire nation when I say, ah. 
you know a lot of people didn't have sex for a month before the race? Joe Pasquale, obviously not one of them. It's great, I actually knocked one out last week. <laughs> Imagine the noise Pasquale makes at the point of climax. <laughs> Dogs all over Britain. No! <laughs> Talking of naughty habits, did you see the signs the marathon organisers put up? Don't wee in people's <laughs> gardens. My brother got in trouble for doing that last year. The odd thing, he wasn't even in the race. He just hates gnomes. <laughs> To the marathon, the media focus on the elite athletes. Emmanuel Mutai raises his arm and smashes the course record. I'd like to focus on the nutters who wore costumes like this. I wonder if there's someone inside that or just pulling. Or pulling. There is someone I'm, inside. I'm just wondering, I hope he doesn't leave a trail behind him, though. I hope he doesn't leave a trail behind. He's not Joe Pasquale. <laughs> I watched the whole race. My favourite runner had to be this guy. A pensioner from Hornchurch in Essex will be the oldest man taking part in this year's London Marathon. <laughs> he's 86 and he's brilliant. Check out his number one running tip. I'll get behind the nice bottom. You get behind the nice bottom on all the aches and pains. <laughs> Last year, it was the nicest bottom I've ever run behind. Mind you, his plan doesn't always work. When I got to the finish, I thought, I must see what she looks like from the front. It was a bloke with a beard. <laughs> I'll never run behind Noel Edmonds again. <laughs> now, one of the major stories of the week was this. A pub in London is facing allegations of homophobia after claims by a gay couple that they were thrown out for kissing. Jonathan Williams and James Bull were asked to leave the Jon Snow pub in Soho after a complaint that their behaviour was obscene. Obscene? It's ridiculous. How can you throw people out of a pub just for kissing? In fact, how can you run a pub in Soho and be offended by a gay kiss? It's like being in the BMP and going, I fucking love Lenny Henry! <laughs> You always hear bigots go, gay men are wrong. He says so in the Bible. Yeah, but the Bible also says hedges can talk and every animal in the world can fit on a boat. <laughs> it's pathetic. Two men kissing isn't an obscene kiss. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wolf whistling over there. <laughs> the brilliant thing about this story, within hours, the pub had to shut because of this protest. Around 250 people have gathered here outside the Jon Snow pub to show their support to Jonathan Williams and James Bull. We've had no comment from the landlord of the pub this evening. He, the pub itself has been shut for the night. <laughs> I love that conga kiss in the brow. Right, on telly, right now. <laughs> Not everyone was there to protest against homophobia. Some were just looking for a good time. Oh, I just right. came to snob people. You're just here to snob people. <laughs> I don't care about the issues. I'm just horny! <laughs> I say good on them for demonstrating against this pub, because when the gay community protests, they do it in style. Jesus had two dads, and he turned out fine. <laughs> There's been some bizarre stories this week. First up, there's a terrifying new criminal on the block. A Lincoln couple have received a letter from the police threatening their unborn baby with an ASBO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, criminals are getting younger, but this is ridiculous. What did his baby scan look like this? It's mad, isn't it? A fetus asthma. What next? Arresting sperm. <laughs> Police bursting into a house. Get down! Damn it, Sarge, she swallowed the evidence! <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> this has... Sorry about that, right? <laughs> this has to be my favourite quote from the story. Charlotte Child, who is 36 weeks pregnant, and her husband, Damien, were invited to attend a meeting with local police to discuss their son's bad <laughs> behaviour. <laughs> what was he doing? Shouting at other pregnant women at a prenatal class. Just in the bump. Who ate all the pies? <laughs> Who ate all the pies? Swollen tummies, you fat mummies, you ate all the pies! <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, if they're giving unborn babies asbos, it's really going to change police lineups. No. No. That's him. This week, The Walking Dead has been in the news. <laughs> so it's zombies, blood, that kind of thing. Now, the reason it's made the news is because of the location of one of the posters advertising the show. Here's the poster. And here's the business next door. That's right! <laughs> they put it next to a funeral director. <laughs> People are saying it's the worst billboard placement ever. Rubbish! It's got nothing on this. Right, on the left, a sign promoting carrot juice, and what do they put next to it? This lady. <laughs> that is... That is certainly one way to get your five a day. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is getting ridiculous. We've had the Hitler house. <laughs> We've had the Elvis bug. And roll tree. <laughs> Amazingly, the papers have done it again. This week, what have we got? Kate Middleton's face found on <laughs> Jelly Bean. <laughs> Do you want to see it? Yeah. You know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> Mind you, if you look hard enough, most food looks like someone. Some crisps look like Wookies. <laughs> Some turnips look like singers. <laughs> and if you look hard enough, there are even apples that look a little bit like Katie Price. <laughs>some truly mad crime stories from America this week. First up, a report about breaking into the wrong man's house. An 81-year-old Korean war vet is fed up with being a victim, so he's fighting back. The man held off this armed robber with a frying pan. <laughs> An old man beat up a burglar with a frying pan. He's brilliant. What about this for a quote? And hit him upside the face. <laughs> and the potatoes went all over him. <laughs> Upside the face, potatoes went all over him. By the time I was done with him, he looked like a shepherd's pie. <laughs> so you're probably thinking after he twatted him, that was the end. Oh no. He wasn't done with a robber after hitting him. I raced back about six feet away and got this pitchfork. Then I went to work on him. <laughs> Poked him in the groin till his dick looked like a goddamn recorder. <laughs> <laughs> From a bruiser pensioner to a family under siege. They felt like they were being held hostage in their own home by a hard to believe circumstance. The situation ended with police having to defend themselves against an unlikely criminal. So, who was this unlikely criminal? Well, listen to the emergency call. Number one, where's your emergency? We try to get out the house and it won't let us. The cat won't let you get out of the house? The cat will not let us get out the house. They were terrorised by a cat. <laughs> How does a cat hold people hostage? <laughs> I'll tell you what, where was this lady when you need her? <laughs> Finally in crime, a row about a haircut that went wrong. A dispute during a haircut led to an arrest and an unfortunate mugshot in Connecticut. You're probably thinking, I doubt it was that bad. Guess again. <laughs> now, if you think you've got a strange diet, you've got nothing on this lady. Woman is addicted to eating sofas. That's what I call a sweet tooth. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I had to. <laughs> do you want to meet her? You know you do. Yes. My name's Adele. I'm 30 years old, and my addiction is eating couch cushions. <laughs> Apparently, she suffers from a medical condition called mad as fuck. <laughs> 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 oh no, 
doctor, but I know what I see. <laughs> Have you seen how much he's eaten? <laughs> Eight settees and five chairs. <laughs> Her guts must look like DFS. <laughs> She'd be crap on come down with me. What are we having? Roast futons. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. We'll have a fucking beanbag then. <laughs> she loves it though. Listen to her describe the taste of sofas. I love couch cushion. The way it sits in my mouth, it's soft and it's a good taste. <laughs> she must spend ages flushing. Oh, come on. If you're eating sponge, then every turd is going to be a floater. <laughs> So, this is the part of the show I genuinely don't know anything about. There's going to be a mystery guest who's been in the news, and I have to figure out who that person is. So far, this series, I've had snakes, poo perfume, and a kung fu granny. So, <laughs> please welcome my mystery guest! <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing your name's Jackie. That's me, Excellent. Big Jackie. Big Jackie. Am I allowed to call you Big Jackie? Yes, that's Sweet. my name, Big Jackie. Lovely stuff. Um, <laughs> so, Big Jackie. <laughs> oh, if I close my eyes, it sounds like I'm on a chat line. <laughs> Hello, is that Big Jackie? 6665595. Mum, are you on the line? <laughs> yeah. So, Jackie, um, I, I'm guessing it's got something to do with. Um, Tiaras and hats. Are you, uh, do you design hats? Well, I do sell hair fascinators. Okay. But that's not why I'm here. Right. <laughs> Flipping hell, this is an absolute conundrum. Um, I don't know. I've got no idea. Um, can you give me any other clues? Well, I'll, I'll just have to reveal myself. Then. Right. <laughs> oh, it's get it off. <sighs> figure out what's going to happen now. I'm going to get beaten up again. That's, what, <laughs> that's the long and short of it. I just happen to be Britain's uh, number one sumo uh, for the first lady to fight in Japan. Oh, wow. That's what I'm going to What are we going to do? Just kick rough... the shit out of me. I'm, yeah. going to... <laughs> I'm just going to show you a few moves, yep. right? And uh, you can just what it's like in the ring. You know, we've got a ring for you and a oh, nappy. Really? Yeah. Right, we've got a nappy but, as well. But before that, we're just going to show a few clips. OK, great. I'm not frightened. Okay. <laughs> Some training moves first. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Sliding feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm now going to show you how to come into the ring first. So <laughs> step into the ring and bow. All oh, right. <laughs> okay, right. Step, I step into the ring. Okay. About. Okay, let's get down on the tiptoes. Now we're washing the hands. This purification. Clapping the hands oh. to get the attention of the gods you know, and show we've got no weapons. The lucky thing is, if I shit myself, I'm wearing a napkin. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. So do that. Then we come in together for an eyeball. <laughs> Good luck with that, I've got a lazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I look out to be there, I've no idea. <laughs> and a bit of slapping on the belt. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> to, to frighten your opponent. <laughs> 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 That'll do. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now the yeah. rules are: we've got to get our hands down, fist down on the floor, and no one can start until we've got our hands down. Okay. Yeah, into this position here. <laughs> get your hands. I'm down. going. I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't start till the hands touch. That, that's right. We can't. <laughs> hey. I'm ready. I'm ready. Then someone's going to shout. Away. Uh, away. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to show you some moves. Okay. Right. 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 Well, there are some lifts that we could do. But <laughs> we could just lift you out. Whoa. We'll take you out. <laughs> or there's a knee lift. There's a knee lift. A okay. Knee lift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was, that felt so lovely. It was so. What's it? I'm not feeling so very gentle. well. And it's just nice to be held. I was just saying. I love me. Has you. anyone ever broken down and gone, I love you? <laughs> Why do we have to fight? Can we not cuddle? Just sit down. <laughs> just sit down. <laughs> just sit down. I don't want to be a sumo wrestler. Just sit down. Give me a cigarette. <laughs> that was nice, sir. <laughs> you, you left me there for longer than you had to, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you're such a nice boy. Yeah. <laughs> so how, did, how, you know, how do you start all this? Well. I've progressed, really. I was a weightlifter wow. uh, and a powerlifter. And then one day, a man came up to me in the gym and he said, you look a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> you fancy being a sumo wrestler? I'll be honest, I didn't know it was made of... <laughs> literally of cardboard boxes. Well, there you go. Literally a cardboard box. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my wonderful mystery guest. <laughs> Thank you. Right, look at the latest thing the Chinese government have banned. Just when you thought that the Chinese censors couldn't get any more sensitive, the authorities here have decided to ban time travel from all television programs. <laughs> Their version of Doctor Who is going to be shit. <laughs> Let's get the Daleks. I can't. Someone's clamped the TARDIS. <laughs> Look at the films they've banned. Star Trek, Back to the Future, oh. and bizarrely, Austin Powers. <laughs> I love the fact that Austin Powers is going to become this dangerous underground film. People in prison. What are you in for? I said groovy, baby. <laughs> so, why are China doing this? The Chinese government wants its citizens to uphold the country's values and not promote anything that would rewrite history. <laughs> It'd be great to rewrite history. If I could travel back in time, I would prevent the world's greatest evil. <sighs> Mr. and Mrs. Bieber. Yeah? For the sake of humanity, use this condom. <laughs> we don't want you having a baby. Baby? Baby. Oh. <laughs> Check out the disturbing new way some teenagers are getting drunk. Some women are soaking tampons and vodka, inserting them into their vaginas for a quick high on alcohol. 
I hope they don't do a flaming Zambuka. <laughs> Unbelievably, this isn't the weirdest new drinking game. This next story is even more bizarre. I had never heard of it until recently. Beer bongs. Children, kids are doing this into their anuses. Literally. <laughs> A beer bong up your ass. That would change the adverts. Fosters. Bad cool. <laughs> what I want to know, how do you know when you're drunk? Does your ass start slurring its farts? Sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to have a drunk ass. It'd be horrible. <laughs> You're walking down the street and it's just showing her girls, Oi, oi! <laughs> you don't get many of them to the pound! <laughs> Terribly sorry, madam. <laughs> I have a binge drinking anus. <laughs> She's like, don't worry about it, love. I've had five tampons. <laughs> Here's a young man who's found a unique way of helping kids in need. Uh, my name is Blake Mykoski. Uh, I'm the founder and chief shoe giver of Tom's Shoes. Tom's originally started about five years ago uh, when I was on a vacation and I met some volunteers who were helping children get shoes. I wanted to help, um, but I didn't want to help just once um, by writing a check or making a donation. Uh, instead, I wanted to create uh, a way to help over and over again. So instead of creating a charity, I started a business, a for-profit company, uh, where every time we sold a pair of shoes, we would give a pair to a child in need around the world. Uh, one for one. So no percentages, no formulas, just very simple. You buy a pair of our shoes, we'll give a pair on your behalf to a child somewhere in the world that needs a pair. You know, seeing the joy on these kids' faces really touched me. That child will never care about the numbers of shoes we've given away or the success Tom's has had. All they care about is that they're getting a brand new pair of shoes in a loving way. And that is such an awesome experience. I had an idea, uh, and it was a small idea when we started. Anyone can make a difference, and you don't have to have it be some huge global campaign. You can start small, and that's just as important. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a wonderful human being. So, my friends, it's Saturday night, which means it's time for our stand-up guest. This next bloke's brilliant. I saw him the other day. I thought he was really funny. So, please, welcome to the stage the wonderful James Acaster! Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, good to see you all. Good to see you. My name's James. I'm from Kettering, which is a... Small town next to the Weetabix factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should whoop. It's a very popular dish. It's, uh... And all of you who eat it, you'll eat it in different ways. Some of you might cover it in yoghurt and honey. Other people, strawberries and cream or sugar and raisins. Basically, just get Weetabix and cover it in anything that tastes better than Weetabix. That's, <laughs> that's the rule. Some people get annoyed when I do that bit because uh, I don't list how they have their Weetabix <laughs> in the morning. You laugh. In Wolverhampton, it kicked off. So... <laughs> Cool guy. Got a hat on. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you've got a good phone as well. Have you got a good phone? It's all right, yeah. Well, let's, let's just get a look. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> so what are they doing? <laughs> Unlucky sucker. <laughs> I'll just trick in the book. <laughs> no, actually, I'll compare it to mine. Actually, while we're here, um, I'll, I'll, I'll see uh, who's cooler, me or me or the hats. Um, oh, hold on. Basically. <laughs> You've already seen this fella, this contender. Remember him? <laughs> Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I know this looks so wrong. <laughs> I could just do the whole gig like that, am I? <laughs> Bam. Of course I've won. If you can't see that at the back, it's the phone you used to have. <laughs> so, you know, uh, this is actually uh, not as good as it looks as well, because 
Uh, about six months ago, I threw it across a road. Uh, <laughs> not on purpose. I've got, you know, very, I gesticulate a lot when I talk. I've got bad grip and uh, <laughs> making a passionate point outside a pub. And then I didn't have my phone anymore. So <laughs> now it's got no buttons in it. There's no, no buttons in that phone anymore. So for the last six months, because I'm, I'm skint, this is how I've been living my life. That's... <laughs> I know that looks lame, but from a distance, it appears as though I've got a Blackberry. <laughs> I get ladies approach me from across bars with this, they see me from across the rooms going, oh, he looks quite... Oh, no, he's just poking an old Nokia with a bio. <laughs> get your numbers, might take a while. Uh, I actually, I'll, I'll leave things to the last minute to get, to get new ones anyway. They always break, and then I'll get a new one. Basically, oh, you, you probably want your phone back, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's thinking then he's actually nicked it. <laughs> That'd be great if I just had loads of good phones. Uh, oh! <laughs> uh, I'll, tell you, I'll start with a fun fact. I'll tell you a fun fact. I learned the other day that if you have Botox, right, on the night that you've had Botox, you fall asleep on the side of your face. You'll wake up the next morning and your eyebrow will have slid from here round to here. <laughs> Tremendous. I figured out if you sleep evenly on both sides of your face, you'll wake up the next morning and look like your eyes are in brackets. <laughs> That's true, I think. Uh, I, uh, I'm pretty gullible. I don't, uh, when, when I was nine, uh, my dad took me to London for the day and spent the whole day just lying to me for his own amusement to see what I would believe. And the what main one he got me with were on the escalators, going past all the different signs for all the different West End shows that are on on the underground. And he told me that the people who put up those posters uh, have one of the hardest jobs in the world. <laughs> I believe that into my teens. Oh. <laughs> kind of images of them walking backwards on the spot. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> my impression of a man on an escalator. <laughs> Pretty good impression. No, you guys didn't get to see it. <laughs> Pretty sweet. I do that impression. My other impression I've got, I can do an impression of uh, someone from Roman times reading a text message. It's quite a niche impression. <laughs> you have no way of checking if it's true, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll do it for you now. I've got the phone now, I'll do it with this. Uh, I won't use the biro because they weren't invented in Roman times. <laughs> this, is, so this, is, this is someone from Roman times. They're reading a text message. 20? Oh no, those are kisses. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the best day out I ever had, I'll tell you this, I went to Woburn Safari Park. Uh, but, yeah, it's fans of Woburn Inch, so there should be. Well, it's an awesome place, I went with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, it was brilliant, before we even got into the park, the park, it was amazing. We were driving up to the gate, and there was a sign on the gate, and the sign said, there will be no lions in the park today due to strong winds. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think reading that sign may have been better than actually seeing a lion. Like, <laughs> some of the things it makes you imagine straight away, just like, is, is a lion really that flimsy? <laughs> is the king of the jungle that vulnerable to drafts? Because if he is, leave them out. I will pay double for that show. <laughs> Figured out right if Woburn Safari Park want to save a lot of money, all they've got to do is get rid of all their animals and just replace them with vague notices explaining why the animals are no longer there. <laughs> to fuel our imaginations with. There will be no cheetahs in the park today due to slippery grass. <laughs> there will be no zebras in the park today due to zebra Christmas. <laughs> There will be no chameleons in the park today, or will there? <laughs> Me and that girl, we, we split up after that. It's not a sad story, we just weren't right for each other. Like, for example, I used to have a, a T-shirt. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> I more T-shirts. I, I, uh, I used to have a T-shirt. A drawing of a haunted house on it. And in all the little windows, there were ghosts. But you couldn't see the ghosts if the lights were on. 
because the ghosts would glow in the dark. <laughs> right, she didn't think that was cool. <laughs> no, I know I'm not cool. I was in the Scouts till I was 15. That is as old as you're allowed to be in the Scouts before they ask you to leave. Like, that's... <laughs> It's fine, I never got bullied at school or anything like that. Although I was chatting to my dad about school recently and he was there going, well, you know, James, school's tough for anyone. <laughs> Don't have to tell you, you got bullied. And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> well, I've never been bullied at school. He just went, didn't you? <laughs> I just always assumed you did. <laughs> like, assumed? That means he'd watch me leave for school every morning <laughs> with my trousers two sizes too small for me and my Thomas the Tank Engine lunchbox. <laughs> I'd just be like, well, I'd bully him. <laughs> Sending our child to the slaughter, Diane, and then he punched him in the face myself. <laughs> Once, my friend Emma went into school and another kid hit her in the face with a sock full of acorns. <laughs> right, thanks for laughing, because... <laughs> when I laughed, she got so offended. <laughs> she thought I was laughing at the fact that she got hurt, which I wasn't. What I was laughing at in that sentence was a sock full of acorns. That, that's always going to make me laugh. She said, I went to school today, a kid hit me in the face of a brick. <laughs> you laugh now because of the brilliant build-up. Normally, people getting hit in the face of bricks is never funny. <laughs> Unless it's in the film Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. When it's hilarious. It's classic. But, uh, she wanted to stop me from laughing. Like, it's the worst way she could have tried to stop me laughing ever. I was there, I was on the floor, properly loving it. And she just went, don't laugh. <laughs> it was full right up to the heel. <laughs> Worst I've ever got. I got poked in the eye once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I poked, this wasn't even in school, it was like a couple of years ago. And I had to go to Moorfields Eye Hospital. And on the way there, in the cab, I was in denial about how bad the eye was. So I was trying to do a crossword the whole way there, like the whole thing. And every time the cabbie would look at me in the rearview mirror, I'd chew the pen to make out like I was struggling with the clues that had nothing to do with the fact my eye was bleeding. And then <laughs> dropped me off at Moorfields. As I was walking up to the door, everyone was recoiling from my hideous face, just trying to get out of my way. It's like, right, let me go to the toilets, assess the damage, see how bad this is. Now, it's pretty bad. But what really stood out was that I had a river of ink running all the way down my chin. <laughs> I've been chewing the pen in the car. Everyone must have been looking at me going, oh God, he can't take care of himself at all. <laughs> Sitting at home, breaking off pens in his mouth and jabbing them in his eye. <laughs> care what you deserve. <laughs> Sitting there in the waiting room next to a lady, she asked me how I'd hurt my eye. Now at the time, it's before I did stand up, I used to work in a school with autistic children. And one of them kicked off that day when I tried to get involved, the way he responded was uh, he got his finger and he um, ploughed it <laughs> into my eye <coughs> with a crunch. <laughs> and uh, when it was in there, <laughs> quickly just... <laughs> this <laughs> what he did was formed a hook oh. and uh, on the return journey <laughs> grabbed his very long fingernail <laughs> over my eyeball scratching the surface And when I told her this, she went, oh, you work with autistic children? That must be so rewarding. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> About a week after me and the Woburn girl split up, I went to a house party. Now, house parties are the worst places to be if you've just split up with someone. You're surrounded by two types of people at a house party. You've got couples and people trying to form new couples. There's no one in between. I overheard one bloke, quite drunk, Lean into a girl and say, at the end of the day, I can be anything from a horny twat to a knobhead. <laughs> now that is quite the range to give yourself. <laughs> Essentially saying, oh, I'll always wind you up, but sometimes I'll do it with a boner. <laughs> Even that didn't cheer me up. 
to go upstairs to the toilet. Not because I wanted to go to the toilet, just wanted to get away from everyone, really. And as I was walking towards the door, it was flung open. And this guy was just standing there, just looking at me, quite drunk. And eventually, he broke the silence. He went, Mate, I love that t shirt. <laughs> I looked down and I'm wearing the Haunted House t-shirt. Now, my self-esteem's been at rock bottom for a whole week, right? Now, with one compliment from a stranger, it's like, bing, back in the room. But then I realise, I'm in a very well-lit corridor at the moment. <laughs> right now, I'm getting a compliment on a drawing of a haunted house. <laughs> so far, I could double my money here. <laughs> I lent in. I never looked so seriously at another human being in my whole life. I just went, you do realise <laughs> this glows in the dark. <laughs> he could not pull me inside that bathroom fast enough. <laughs> Straight in, door shut, and my t-shirt started doing its thing when we turned the lights off, and he was going to contain himself. He was so excited. The whole thing, he's just there going, oh, mate, that is awesome. I was like, yes, she never appreciated this. <laughs> so that's what came out the chimney. I was like, it's the chimney ghost! <laughs> My favourite ghost. <laughs> it was then that I realised there are three types of people at a house party and not two. There are couples, there are people trying to form new couples, and there are newly single men standing in a darkened bathroom showing their glowing ghost to another dude. <laughs> You guys have been an absolute, absolute pleasure to talk to. I uh, hope to see you again soon. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for James Acaster! There you go. I hope you enjoyed watching Good News. Have an excellent Saturday and a wonderful weekend. Farewell, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>